How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Derby Headlines, your Derby news and rumor show right here on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the Derby and NXT and No Holds Barred, anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred, WP as always, and you can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co-host at Corporate Cappy. You can also follow the podcast on Instagram if you're into that Instagram thing. Go to No Holds Barred at WP, all one word on Instagram, and click add. If you want to listen to us on the go, we are available to listen to on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Spreaker is a fantastic podcast app, guys. I highly suggest you go download it. You can chat with us when we're live on ER2 whenever we are live, and you can subscribe to the podcast and get all episodes of the podcast spreaker.com slash nhbwp is where you can find that or download the app on all android and apple devices you can also watch the video of this there to be headlines on youtube as well youtube.com slash nhbwr make sure you hit that subscribe button that bell icon for all upload updates i'm your host the self-proclaimed greatest host as always kyle masters and I'm not joined by Cobra Cappy, guys. That's strictly for the Lowdown Show. I did ask him if he wanted to come on the show today, but he had other plans. And he, his Sundays are usually tend to be really busy. So that's all right. I'll be doing the show solo as always. Um, like I said this past week on the Lowdown Show, if you didn't see it, guys, go back and watch it. I highly suggest you listen to that. It was a good episode. Um, but what I talked about in the beginning is the Lowdown Show is just going to be strictly podcast form. And there will be headlines and other videos we do will be video form like this one. But it will also be available on the podcast form as well. So if you want to watch the video version of there will be headlines, go over to YouTube and you can see my beautiful face and watch this episode of there will be headlines. Um, other than that, guys, I'm planning. I'm really I'm, I'm so close. I, I put a lot of work into this universe mode for 2K18 that I'm going to do for you guys. And I'm, I'm working on it day by day whenever I can. And getting the arenas made and, and figuring out what rosters I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to do a live draft or not anymore. I think I'm just going to build the rosters and then show you guys what I've got. And then we'll go from there. And then uh, I'm thinking that maybe we should, on each branded show, we should take one superstar, one tag team, one woman to follow through those brands. So I think that's what we're going to do. Keep it simple and keep it uh, a lot easier. But So if you're new to the podcast, you, probably, you should have just done that at the beginning. But uh uh, this is No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast, guys. We talk about Dirty B on the headline show, and this is Dirty B Headlines, where we talk about any news and rumors throughout the week in a Dirty B, and I give you my thoughts, and I read you the uh, trending articles you guys can take with a grain of salt. Sometimes they're rumors, sometimes they're not true. We know the sources that they come from, and who knows? We never know. I just read to you guys and give you my opinion on what is said. Um, you guys can share your opinions with us about them. If you want to tweet at us or leave a comment on YouTube, please do so. Feel free. Uh, we'll take any criticism. We don't care. We'll take anything. Um, but, yeah. Uh, also, the Lowdown Show is every uh, Thursday. We try to do it on Thursdays. Sometimes it's on Wednesday nights right after NXT. But we review and uh, give our reactions to NXT. We used to do Raw and SmackDown, but until it gets a little better, I don't know if we're ever going to go back to it and start reviewing them. But uh, NXT is strictly our review show. We love NXT. We love what it's all about. And it's literally the A show, we think, uh, throughout the week of the WWE. Um, but that's our opinion. You guys have your opinions out there. And that's all that matters. Um all right, now we got a jam-packed news show today, guys. Really, really jam-packed. I, obviously, the major story, if you see the thumbnail uh, down on YouTube, the major story is what's going on with Matt Hardy and the Awoken Matt Hardy, or Broken, whatever they're going to do this Monday. It looks like they're te- they tease it hard this weekend, all the live events, especially last night, and they got all the videos released, and we'll get into that when we get into the last story of the day. But, uh, guys, if you don't know about headlines, headlines always say the big story for last, and they go through all the other stories uh, throughout the beginning, middle, and near the end, and then we get into the big story right at the end of there to be headlines. So, without further ado, let me take a sip of my Tim Hortons coffee. That's just what we're Canadians drink up here, is that glorious Tim Hortons coffee. And we get into the first article, and uh, basically this has to do, there's a couple of them here, and it all has to do with Clash of Champions, so Clash of Champion news. Uh, we'll get into the first one. Three big title matches were announced this week for Clash of Champions. The 2017 edition of Clash of Champions pay-per-view ta- uh, takes place on December 17th. The event will be headlined by WWE Championship match between AJ Styles and Jinder Mahal. Yes, we're getting that rematch. God damn. Anyways, <laughs> WWE has announced three more title matches for the event in recent video update. 
Charlotte Flair will defend her SmackDown Women's title against Natalya. Baron Corbin will defend his United States Championship match. This is the weird one against Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler. And we'll get into why Ziggler was added to that later on. Um, the Usos will defend their SmackDown Tag Team titles against Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin and the New Day. So there's a another triple threat there. So that's kind of... That, I think that uh, has the potential to be a good match. I'll get into it when we get into it. Um... So here's the updated card so far. We got the WWE title match of AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal. With the WWE United States title triple threat match of Baron Corbin, Bobby Roode, and Dolph Ziggler. The SmackDown Women's title match of Charlotte Flair versus Natalya, which I really don't give a shit about. Um, and then the WWE SmackDown tag team title three-way match. The Usos, Chad Gable, and Shelton Benjamin, and The New Day. Um, so we got some speculation on the U.S. title match for Clash of Champions, and it's going to give us. There's a lot of these articles are going to include scenarios that I'm going to go. I'm going to read to you that were on this website, and then I'm going to give you my opinion on them after I read them. Um, so third, we announced that Baron Corbin will be defending his United States uh, title at Clash of Champions in a triple threat match. Corbin will face Ziggler and Rude. This is a bit of a surprise since Dolph it has not been involved in this uh, tension between. Corbin and feud over the past few weeks. So let's speculate on how the match will end at Clash of Champions. Scenario one: uh, Dolph Ziggler is on, is the only one in the match to be the one who takes the pinfall loss. Darby wants to extend the feud between Rude and Corbin, but doesn't want either of them taking a pinfall loss right now. As a result, Corbin is able to retain by pinning Ziggler. There hasn't been much storyline development in the feud between Corbin and Rude, so they could easily keep it going until the Royal Rumble. Now, I really like that scenario. I think that's probably more what they're going to go lean towards. I don't think they're going to do anything else with Dolph Ziggler in this because it was such a quick ad and it really doesn't make sense. And they what they have like two weeks to build for it, so I don't think they're going to do anything much from this. So it makes sense that they add Dolph Ziggler to take the pinfall so they can continue this feud going forward. But hey, you can continue the feud going forward. Maybe you could have uh, Baron Corbin cheat to win, and that's so how you continue the feud. So really, it, it makes sense and it doesn't make sense. Uh, scenario two, uh, the exact same scenario as I just read, except Rude wins the title by pinning Ziggler. Keeps the feud going between Rude and Corbin for the next several months. Neither of them take a pin. So that's interesting. I could, To me, I think Bobby Rude, if he's going to win a title, it shouldn't be a clash of shames. I think they should wait till WrestleMania, for, especially a guy like Bobby Rude, who I know they've ruined so far. He's basically not the same Bobby Rude as he was in NXT, especially because now he's a babyface, which sucks. Um, if you're going to have Bobby Roode win a championship now, you're going to have to wait till WrestleMania. you got to make it big because it, it just falls hand in hand with his entrance and everything, and it means more. So I don't think we're going to see Bobby Roode winning a title until WrestleMania. So I don't think that scenario is going to come true. And the last scenario, it says, Dolph Ziggler shocks the wrestling world and wins the title. Ziggler recently spoke about being upset with his position in WWE and also that his contract expires soon. Maybe WWE gives him a title run to convince him to re-sign to another deal. Not likely, but a possibility, and I can see it as a possibility because we all know what happens when you go out and complain about your current WWE situation. <coughs> Alicia Fox. <coughs> um, so maybe that could happen. I don't really see it happening more than the scenario one, but I think that's actually a possibility. Like if if he does win, I think that's the only likelihood that why that happened is because he's been complaining outside the company about his spot in WWE, and we all see what happens when you do that. Looks like WWE kind of just rewards you with it, which is wrong and totally wrong. I, I understand that. So you're gonna reward someone complaining about their their current state right now? That's that's childish. Like grow up. So. It is what it is, but I think the more likely scenario right now would probably be um, scenario one, where uh, Ziggler is in the match to. Uh, sorry, I gotta adjust my mic here. <laughs> Ziggler is in the match to uh, take the pinfall rather than um, him winning a title or him doing anything or having Bobby Roode pin him. So I think Corbett's going to retain by pinning Dolph Ziggler. Uh, speculation, we get some more about Clash of Champions here. Uh, speculation on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn at Clash of Champions. Uh, Kevin Owens defeated Randy Orton on SmackDown Live this past week in a no disqualification match. Sami Zayn was banned from ringside from for the match by Shane McMahon, but he found a loophole. Zayn attacked Randy Orton on the ramp with a steel chair instead of at ringside. This helped lead to an eventual win of Kevin Owens. Uh, let's speculate on what Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn will do at Clash of Champions, but it remains unclear. So we got more scenarios for you guys. Uh, scenario one, 
Sammy getting involved seems to tease that a tag team match will happen at Clash of Champions. If this is the case, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens would face off against Randy Orton and a partner. It seems like it might be Shane McMahon as the partner since there has been more tension teased between him, uh, Zayn, and Owens for the past few months. I really don't see that happening because that kind of overshadows all the championship matches. This is a championship pay-per-view like they're, the main focus is all the title matches, and obviously AJ Styles and Jinder Mahal are the main focus of the show. I highly doubt that they do um, Sami Zayn and Owens versus Orton and Shane McMahon. I really don't see that happening. I've, Shane just had a match at Survivor Series. I don't think he's the guy to have more than one match a year, um, or that much more than a couple matches a year. I, I really don't see it happening, especially right after Survivor Series. So we'll go see what this, the other scenarios are like, and then I'll give my opinion more. Um, Scenario 2, still a tag team match, but instead of Shane, we see Shinsuke Nakamura team up with Randy Orton, obviously, because what the fuck else is he doing against Sami Zayn Owens? Nakamura currently doesn't have anything lined up for the event and has teamed with Orton a few times over the past two months. I can see that happening, and I could literally see that being a pre-show match, because why else would you put that in the main card? I mean, unless it involved a stipulation for, for Owens and Zayn, then I don't see it sh- being a main card uh match unless it was the first match of the show um or scenario three shane forces zane to face shinsuke nakamura in a singles match at clash of champions or we get a rematch against kevin owens in this scenario so me i'm torn between scenario two and three here i think both are likely to happen i obviously love scenario three because i'd love to see zane nakamura go out in a one-on-one match it'd definitely be a show stealer I don't know if there to be wants to do that. They don't want to overpower AJ Styles and, and Jinder Mahal, even though that's not going to be a great match. I do think that they don't want to overpower it with a star power match like like Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura because then that'll just literally take everything away from that championship match. So I'm going to go with scenario two in this case, and that is uh, Shinsuke Nakamura teaming up with Randy Orton uh, to face Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And it's probably going to be like a first match of the card or second match of the main card or a definite pre-show match where I think it does belong. And it sucks because I don't want to see Nakamura in the pre-show, but he's literally getting dealt a bad hand here. And I think if that happens, then it's going to be a matter of time before we get to the Royal Rumble. And then we're going to see Shinsuke Nakamura win the uh, Royal Rumble because it looks like it's going to be a SmackDown superstar this week with the lineup pay-per-view coming out the other day. Um, so, so, so more about Clash of Champions. we got speculation on the uh, SmackDown Live women's title match at Clash of Champions. Uh, the Clash of Champions pay-per-view is coming up, which means uh, every title will be on the line. The title match at the event that looks to be the most uncertain at the moment is Charlotte Flair and her SmackDown Women's Championship after SmackDown Live this week. We still don't know who will be her next challenger. Uh, let's speculate on a, let's speak on a couple scenarios on who the challenger for Charlotte will be. Okay, so it's already announced about Natalia, so there's obviously this article's old. Um, so I just want to see what... I'm going to read the scenarios anyways, and I'm going to give my opinion on what maybe the other ones should have been. So it gave the scenario of Natalia, so I'm not going to read that. Um, the other scenarios would have been Charlotte Flair versus Ruby Riot. This sort of like the direction that we could be heading. Ruby would have a Riot squad in her corner. Ruby picked up the pin on Charlotte on SmackDown this week, which could tease that this match would happen. It's pretty early to... But I'm not sure if there to be wants to push Ruby right and title push her right away. So it looks like they ha- they they weren't going to, and obviously they weren't with now the announced match of Charlotte Flair and Natalia taking place for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. Um, it's tough because like I would love to see it, it would only make sense, and we can finally get a different match in ahead of us with Ruby Wright and Charlotte Flair going at it for the women's title. You don't have to have Ruby Wright Ruby Wright win. Uh, you can have something go on, or Ruby Wright gets a disqualification. You know, like it gets her. Her, her conies in there and just beat the shit out of Charlotte. Um, and then maybe UT is kind of a cash in by Carmella because we don't know what the hell's going on with her. And that leads into scenario three where we have Charlotte versus Carmella. The Riot Squad attack Charlotte over the next few weeks, which leads to Carmella getting the cash in victory. As a result, Charlotte would use her rematch clause at, at Clash of Champions. So that would be interesting, but. I highly doubt we get that in the next couple of weeks leading up to Clash of Champions. So, obviously, they went with Scenario 2 with Charlotte Flair versus Natalia, which I really don't give a shit about this match. Like, I I don't want to see Natalia and Charlotte go at it. We know Natalia is not winning the title back from Charlotte, regardless of people saying that, oh, the the Riot Squad is going to help uh, 
Natalia win. Natalia's going to be like the fourth member. That's not happening. Let's get real here, guys. It's not happening. Charlotte is going to retain, and it's going to be the most predictable match ever. I don't see anything else happening after it. Maybe the Riot Squad attack Charlotte after the match, and maybe if that ca- ca- causes uh, Carmella to cash in and win the title there, I'd be happy with that. I think that's a really good scenario. So I'm going to go with that scenario and have Charlotte beat Natalia, but then the Riot Squad attack Charlotte after the match, beat her down until Carla, Carmella comes in and cashes in. Maybe I don't know, Carmella's a fourth member, maybe not, uh, but Carmella comes in, cash in, and gets that women's championship. So, interesting stuff there for uh, Clash of Champions. So we got some more news here. Uh, Kurt Angle explains why he was cleared by WWE, and Daniel Bryan wasn't. Hmm, that's interesting, eh? So I uh, decided to pull this article to read to you guys, and I'll get my opinion on it, and uh, we got a couple of long quotes uh, from Kurt Angle, because uh, Kurt Angle was recently cleared by WWE, and he wrestled a few matches for the company already. Many wrestling wrestling fans are scratching their heads and wondering why WWE has cleared Angle, but not Daniel Bryan. Kurt recently participated in a recent Q and A session with fans on a uh, I don't know if it was a wrestling radio or, or podcast. It doesn't say here. Uh, Angle was asked about WWE clearing him to return to the ring and explain why they haven't cleared Daniel Bryan. Here is what Angle said. No, it's not Daniel Bryan's neck. No, it's concussions. That's a serious thing today. You obviously see the NFL, and there's a lot of lawsuits being thrown back and forth. It's a very dangerous thing. I talked to Daniel personally. I passed a physical. I haven't had an issue with my neck in 12 years. I did break it four times in two years between 2004 and 2006, but I've been fine ever since. You have a protocol you need to follow. The physical it entails a certain amount of things, and the most important one is the concussion test. Daniel couldn't pass it. He had 10 concussions that he knows of that are a huge liability. Can Daniel eventually wrestle? I think he can, but it comes down to him passing a concussion test. I know in time your brain heals, so we don't know how much damage has been done thus far. Is there a possibility of him wrestling? Maybe. I hope so. I feel bad that he took it personally and I was able to wrestle. He wasn't mad or upset. He just couldn't understand how they passed me, but not him. But they are two different things. So, that's coming from Kurt Angle. But I thought I heard that Daniel Bryan, he, he passed concussion tests from other people, just not there to be doctors, which is kind of sketchy. And I understand why Daniel Bryan's pissed here and, and kind of scratching his head and is sketching out. It also says Angle also says that Bryan would be his selection for his dream match. And he's, Angle says, if I had a dream match that I want, I would go against Daniel Bryan. He's awesome. No, like, it's it's such a, a touchy, sketchy subject with the whole concussion thing and how Daniel Bryan says he's had so many tests out, done outside the WWE and they say he's more than okay, he's better than he was before his concussions. It's weird how WWE doctors still don't clear him or maybe they just haven't tested him and they don't want to test him and they don't want to take that chance. But they talk about, they always refer to the NFL and the lawsuits that are handed back and all that stuff. Wouldn't it be on the fault more of Daniel Bryan if he's the one pushing himself to come back and saying like I don't care if I got a concussion then it's my fault and that's my choice for going into there and I will not sue the company I think he can trust Daniel Bryan enough that he won't come back and sue the WWE because it was him they should do like a contract or something him signing it and saying like if you get a concussion it's not our like we're not liable like you are wouldn't they why wouldn't they just do that no it's it's really weird it's really really touchy so We'll see what happens. Maybe eventually we see Daniel Bryan in a WWE ring, or maybe we'll see him in a Ring of Honor ring. Something I think we will see Daniel Bryan wrestle again. I just doesn't. We just don't know where. And I, I really hope WWE would just clear him already because I think we can still can get a lot of dream matches out of Daniel Bryan left before he uh, goes to another company or retires. Even that for that case. So um, let's move on here. We got a new show coming to the WWE Network in December. Dirtly sent down an email to the Derby Network subscribers, which highlights... I didn't get this email. I don't know what the hell it's talking about. Uh, which highlights things that are coming to the streaming site in December. There were a few network collections showcased, including ones based on Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura. The big news from the email was started to be teasing a brand new show that will be hosted by Corey Graves. And it is called Straight to the Source with Corey Graves. Here are some of the details that it will air on December 4th, so tomorrow after Raw... Uh, the first guest will be Roman Reigns. Here is the synopsis. We want answers to your burning questions surrounding the big dog. Find out as Corey Graves goes straight to the source with Roman Reigns. Now, a lot of people out there are saying that this is like close to um, WWE bringing to the table, and they just kind of scrap WWE bringing to the table uh, in general, which I wouldn't doubt that they would because it was actually one of the 
good show. Well, it started out as a good show, and then they started getting WWE, WWE eyes, and a lot of people don't know what that means, and a lot of the Kool Aid drinkers know what that means, and it basically the show is basically turning to a Kool Aid drinking show, and they're just agreeing with whatever WWE told them to say. It wasn't really like didn't come across as like unscripted like it should have been. So. Um, I think this is probably what's going to replace, and I don't know if Corey Graves is going to be unscripted or not, or are we going to get those kinds of questions that are not uh, the ones that are to be wrote themselves? Like it's it's weird. So I wonder what's going to happen with that. We'll have to see tomorrow night. I don't have any more news on it, so we'll just have to see what happens, and then I'll report more on it uh, as the week goes on. Um, we got a rumor killer on the Leo Rush being released by Derby. I know a lot of people want to know, and a lot of people are really confused about what's going on with Leo Rush. Uh, Leo Rush made headlines several weeks ago when he made a joke about Emma's release from the WWE. Rush joke uh, drew the... Uh, sorry. Wait, what? I don't know what's going on with the article. Drew the eye of many on this uh, of his WWE colleagues, including Bray Wyatt. Following this, there were rumors that Rush had generated so much heat within the company. On uh, Wednesday night, Rush removed all references from the WWE from his social media profiles. He changed his hometown from Orlando, where the WWE Performance Center was, to Baltimore. This led to rumors starting or stating or starting that he was released by Dirt B. And we have an update for you from Mike Johnson of the PW Insider. He says that as of this morning, which was yesterday, Leo Rush has not been released from World Wrestling Entertainment. And PW Insider actually has confirmed this. So he's still with the company. I don't know whether or not he's getting ready to leave, or maybe his contract he has a really short contract, and as soon as it's done, he's out of here. Um I don't think they should be letting him go. I think literally they've only been pulling him from everything as like a punishment, a slight little punishment. We talked about this on the lowdown show, so I don't think they're really doing much with Leo Rush right now because it's a form of punishment. I think we will see Leo Rush more in the WWE because he's a pride asset. And I don't think they want to let him go, just yet, especially Triple H. I think he, he there's a lot of potential in Leo Rush, and I know Triple H sees that. So I don't think this is the end of, of Leo Rush, guys. I think this is just something. I know when someone does when a wrestler does something on their social media page, people like fucking freak out and lose their, lose their minds and go, "Oh shit! Like what's going on here?" And I know sometimes it does lead to what people are thinking, but I for this case, I don't think it is what we are thinking of and Leo Rush being released from the WWE. I think we're going to see more of Leo Rush as time goes on. Um, I have a WWE rumor here. The original plans for Charlotte Flair before the Riot Squad debuted. Uh, Charlotte Flair won the SmackDown Women's Championship from Natalia a few weeks ago. She went on to defeat Alexa Bliss in Survivor Series in a champion versus champion match. After this, Charlotte defended her or defended her title against Natalia, but the match was interrupted by the debut of the Riot Squad. It turns out that this was not the original plan for Charlotte and her feud with Natalia. According to Dave Meltzer of the latest Wrestling Observer Newsletter, you guys know what Dave Meltzer is all about, take it with a grain of salt, Darby was building towards a Charlotte and Tamina feud. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Charlotte and Tamina. That would have been the worst feud of all time. So thank God the, Ru- the Riot Squad did what they did. With the recent call-ups of Ruby Riot, Sarah Logan, and Liv Morgan, those plans look to have been changed and pushed back to a later date. Hopefully not even pushed back. Hopefully just scrap. Like, get rid of that. No one wants to see Charlotte and Tamina go at it. Let's be honest here. If you want to see Charlotte and Tamina go at it, you've lost touch just as much as Vince has. Plain and simple. Period. The feud between Tamina and Charlotte could play on the idea that they are both second-generation wrestlers. Who cares? Who cares? Um... It would make sense, though, for a feud before the NXT calls, before they were many heels, blah, 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 blah. So, I've, thank God they haven't gone that direction. We're getting Natalia and Tamina. Or, sorry, uh, Charlotte and Tamina. That would have been the worst. Even Natalia and Tamina would be even worse. That would be cringe central. So, thank God it would be actually fucking woke up and actually didn't go this way. Oh, man, just cringe central. We've got some more rumors here on the reasons why shorten why did we shorten the names of Luke Harper and Eric Rowan? Because we all know why, but I'm still going to read it to you guys. So there might be something different here, but maybe not. News broke last week that we had altered the names of the Bludgeon Brothers. Luke Harper has his name cut down to Harper, while Eric Rowan has his name trimmed down to Rowan. So they're named Rowan and Harper. Many fans know that this isn't an unusual thing for WWE to do. A.K.A., as it just reads here, Biggie Langston, Antonio Cesaro, Alexander Rusev, Adrian Neville, yada, yada, yada. According to Dave Meltzer of the latest Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Vince McMahon made the decision because he feels, of course it was Vince McMahon, he feels that it came across as more dominant as heels with shortened names. Hmm. 
Okay. So when you had the Wyatt family and you wanted them to build dominant and you didn't shorten their names, what are you trying to say, Vince? Again, like I said, he's lost touch. Clearly, right here, it, it means he's lost touch. Also, their vignettes, Harper, Rowan, Bludger Brothers, sounds a bit better than Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, Bludger Brothers. I really don't see the fucking difference. I really don't think it's more appealing or more like makes them seem dominant with shortened names. I think it's just stupid. I think everyone else thinks it's just stupid. Like, you don't need to shorten their names. Leave them alone, Vince. Like, relax. Like, you're shorting everybody's name. It's just going to be Styles. It's just going to be Mahal. It's just going to be Cena. He's going to take everyone's first names away. Ah, unbelievable. It just doesn't make sense in my mind. You, you guys leave me your opinions out there. What do you guys think of them shortening the names of the Bludgeon Brothers? Let me know. Uh, big woman's match announced for Raw tomorrow night, and I'm stoked for this. So stoked. And I know Corporate Cappy is stoked for this, but this is a two-parter because it goes into what the future of Paige and Asuka is. We got some rumors about that. But the big match announced for Raw. Paige returned to WWE two weeks ago and has made a big impact so far. She didn't come alone, though. She brought Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose from NXT. Together, they formed a new faction called Absolution. There's a mystery. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. Anyways, on Raw this week, the trio were set to face Mickey James, Bailey, and Sasha Banks in a tag team match. Absolution took out Bailey and James before things could get started, and they left Banks alone to get beat up in the ring by the new stable. Derby just announced a big match for Raw this Monday. Paige will take on Sasha Banks. So the series between my girl, my number one girl, and uh, Brandon's number, or sorry, Corporate Cappy's number one girl is a uh, big deal because, <laughs> unfortunately, Paige is 0-3 against Sasha Banks. I'm ready to change that and go to 3-1 and with a win this week. So I think the stable will probably help uh page out here and whether Bailey and Mickey James try to help or not we'll see what happens or maybe it's the opposite maybe uh, the page and uh, or sorry B- Bailey and Mickey James come out and attack uh, uh, page maybe cause the DQ and get a DQ win 3-1 we'll see but that's any you know, it's match huge and it's weird how they announced it like 48 hours before Raw it's really uh, strange I don't know if they hope they don't plan on changing it we'll see what happens um, but I got some news on the future of Paige and Asuka because uh, Asuka defeated Dana Brooke in a few seconds on Raw this week. After the match, uh, Asuka was surrounded by Paige's new faction, Absolution. Paige and her crew didn't attack, but there was certainly something teased for the future because there's a slight stare down with Paige and Asuka. We speculate that Derby just planted the seeds for Asuka versus Paige at WrestleMania 34. If that happens, oh my god, dude. Like, I'm going to wrestle. When me and Copy are going to WrestleMania 34, I would die to see that match in this scenario derby would build this storyline up over the next several months and not rush into it Paige and her crew will have uh, interactions with oscar but we won't see Paige and oscar face each other until the big event if the rumors of the four horsewomen versus horsewomen four horsewomen match at wrestlemania come true i can th- i can't think of a, a bigger match for the raw women's title in the raw women's division than oscar versus Paige. now with that i think you have Paige. uh Here's the booking step. So I have them written down here. So Paige wins the title from Alexa Bliss at the Royal Rumble or over the next few weeks uh, on Raw and the rematch happens at the Rumble. Asuka wins the first ever uh, Raw Elimination Chambers match or Royal Rumble, whatever they have, um, to get that spot at WrestleMania. Asuka defeats Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose on different episodes of Raw during their build for WrestleMania. And at WrestleMania, you have Asuka and Paige face each other for the title of WrestleMania 34. And of course, you're going to have to have Asuka win there and not get her first loss, but win the title and become a dominant champion heading into 2018. That's what they should do. I'm okay with that. I'm okay because for storyline-wise and booking-wise, that makes perfect sense. I can have Paige win her championship at uh, the Royal Rumble, finally, and then carry that on into a feud with Asuka leading into WrestleMania 34. That would be dope. I would love to see that live when we go uh, this April to New Orleans. So I, I love those booking steps, and I think I, I would definitely go with them, and I think WWE should actually go with them. So that is that. Uh, WWE has reportedly released Jim Johnson. If you guys don't know who Jim Johnson is, he is responsible for most of the legendary themes in WWE history. He's the producer of them. This includes Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ultimate Warrior, The Rock, Triple H, and The Undertaker. More recently, he is responsible for the themes of Roman Reigns, Jinder Mahal, and Baron Corbin. So there have been some rumors floating around on Thursday that a longtime WWE composer, Jim Johnson, has been released from the company from working with WWE for over 30 years. According to the reports from both Dave Meltzer and Ryan Satin of the Pro Wrestling Sheep, it does look like that he has been let go by the WWE. 
This release sounds like it was a mutual decision. Derby has ch- chosen to let him go. Derby will be using a CFO dollar sign, if you guys know who that is, for most of their new themes uh, going forward, and they have used them for their themes for the past few years. So Jim Johnson gone. Unfortunately, he's made some really good legendary Derby themes in Derby and it made some of the newer ones. But CFO dollar sign has done... Uh, I'd say like 95% of a good job. There's some things where they were bad, but they've gone back and fixed them after. So I think CFO Dollar Sign is a good replacement. And Jim Johnson, uh, we wish you well on your future endeavors. You were awesome. Legendary Dare to Be music producer. Um, so I got some news on Dolph Ziggler. So this goes back to what I was talking about in the beginning of the show. Uh, Dolph Ziggler was recently a guest on ENC's podcast of awesomeness hosted by Edge and Christian. During the interview, Ziggler opened up about his current position in the Dare to Be and some of his frustrations. He also shared some insight into his future on the Dare to Be once his contract expires. Ziggler says that two years ago he was thinking about leaving Dare to Be, but they ended up convincing him to sign a new deal. Now he teases that he has a very short amount of time left to decide what he wants to do again. This is quote from Dolph Ziggler. I have a short amount of time left to figure out if I want to do this again or if there's something else to reach for. All I can reach for is having a fun ass is having fun ass matches and tearing it down on the weekend because it doesn't seem to be specific. Great prizes to be reaching from what I'm from 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 what for here that I can attain. <laughs> Sorry, you can be patted on the back and told you're you're our guy, you're Shawn Michaels, you are so good at this. We we can't do this without you. And then watch a bunch of people not in their position coast right by. So I understand where he's coming from with that. That really sucks if they go and tell him like you're the guy, like you're you you have everything, and they just float people right by him and give them those shots that he doesn't get. There are no feelings hurt. This is a show business thing. I love it, and it's a very short time. I have to decide if I need to go away or do my own thing or a different role here. Ziggler says that he would uh, love to keep working for WWE, but wants to be in a different level. Gatekeeper is a great spot for someone who hasn't been world champion. <laughs> Who doesn't excel at seven or of the eight possible things that we do here as sports entertainers? It is really weird that I can't get more. But trust me, when I say I'm knocking on every door, other every other day, and almost demanding it, it's true. We will see what happens in the next very short while. But I would love to keep doing this just at a different level. I need to know that the company is on my side with taking it to another level to get back and help a better and help me get to a better level. So, to me, with Dolph Ziggler. I think he needs to leave the WWE, to be honest. I know a lot of people would be sad and would disagree with me and say he should stay, and eventually a shot would come. But to me, like, there's nothing for him in WWE. He can do so much more in indies, and you can see all these indie stars that are flourishing more than if they were in WWE, a.k.a. Bullet Club, a.k.a. others like that. Dolph Ziggler would be probably a perfect fit for that Bullet Club if you ever were to go and join or a guy to feud against the Bullet Club. You know, we can get un- insane matches at a Dolph Ziggler in the indie uh in the indie world. So I really do think Dolph Ziggler should leave the Derby when his contract expires and explore his option, get better. And maybe, you know, it could be like a Drew McIntyre thing. They'll look back and go, damn, we shouldn't have let go of Dolph Ziggler, sign him back and he gets his shots. He deserves, uh, coming back into the WWE. So guys, we reached that end of the show, that part of the show where I go over the big article and the big, uh, something that's big and trending big right now. And that is the, Big update on the future of the broken Matt Hardy gimmick in the WWE. So this past week on Monday Night Raw, Matt Hardy teased that his broken gimmick is coming soon. The biggest thing that was standing in the way of his gimmick coming to Dirty B was Matt's battle with Impact Wrestling over ownership. We have a big update on the broken Matt Hardy gimmick in the future it has in the WWE. PW Insider reports that the Impact or that Impact Wrestling has internally decided that they will not pursue ownership of the broken universe so that is a great great sign here this would leave matt open to trade market for himself without any opposition to go along with this impact wrestling's president ed nornholm released a statement to sports illustrated about the broken gimmick he says that they will not they will now allow talent to use their gimmicks after they leave impact so this is quote from ed nornholm he says we've seen the character development and will be interesting and we'll be interested to see that where they take the concept. Our new talent agreements all incorporate language that allow talent to continue their use, their impact persona after they leave the company. We are working on our with our legal team to amend our existing agreements to expend this to all of our current and former talent. So it's finally happened. Impact Wrestling has officially cut ties with trying to get the broken gimmick from Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy is free to trademark it. And we can finally get... 
the broken gimmick to Darby, and we got it teased hard uh, this past week. Uh, as we get into this other part, Matt Hardy has released a broken teaser video. If you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you go watch it. It's awesome. It looks like after months and months of waiting, broken Matt Hardy is finally coming to the WWE. Um, Matt Hardy has released a teaser video to hype the gimmick coming to WWE. The title is listed... It has begun uh, and has been edited by Derby's promo team. On Friday, Matt addressed Bray Wyatt, who defeated him on Raw this past Monday, and here's what he said. In return, it is now my duty my, to delete your demon. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I take a sip of coffee after that. <laughs> but, uh... Interesting. So it looks like Matt Hardy is targeting Bray Wyatt, which we all said should be the first opponent for the broken Matt Hardy gimmick. Um, to me, it's like a WrestleMania match. I know a lot of you guys out there agree with me that that should be saved for WrestleMania, but it looks like we're kind of going to get it at the Royal Rumble instead. Maybe they have bigger plans for Matt Hardy at WrestleMania. I'm actually hearing that Jeff Hardy could be back before WrestleMania 34, and that could probably lead into a Matt versus Jeff match at WrestleMania 34, broken Matt versus Jeff Hardy. Um, we know that'd be a sick WrestleMania type match, so who knows? Maybe that's why they're going to do the Bray Wyatt thing as soon as the Royal Rumble. So I think that's where it's heading. Now, to get some insight on the broken Matt Hardy gimmick, and if it will work in WWE, Tommy Dreamer has come out and actually comment on it, and I have it right here. Uh, former WWE superstar Tommy Dreamer was recently interviewed by Wrestling Inc., Dreamer was asked about his thoughts on the broken Matt Hardy gimmick coming to WWE and if it could work uh, in the WWE. Here's what Dreamer had to say about the broken Matt gimmick and if it will work in WWE. He says, quote, You think about one year ago, Matt Hardy was probably the hottest wrestler out there and he was probably the last good thing to watch on TNA. And I'm not saying that as a slight to TNA, but he was unique, he was different, he was a character. How he tweeted... How he did everything was full deletion mode, and I used Matt all the time. When Matt and Jeff came back, it was awesome. I love Matt and Jeff. You can't look at them how WWE is viewing them as a retro act. And yes, they were hot, and they and their ladder match was awesome. But you can say, oh, they're here to get the younger guys over. They still have a lot of gas left in the tank as performers. I could I could see WWE prof profiting from merchandise and will delete and delete signs. You name it. To give him the ball and Matt and will deliver it. So, big words from Tommy Drew basically saying that Darby could profit from the broken Matt gimmick. He says that it was awesome to see Matt and Jeff come back as a retro act and put some guys over, but now it's done for that. They can capitalize now on the broken Matt gimmick. Make tons of money. That's what it's about. You can make tons of money out of Matt Hardy with this broken universe thing. You know that the Delete show will probably be the number one thing sold on Darby's shop. It'll surpass everybody in any kind of merch. You know it's going to happen. On Halloween, you'll sell wigs with the, the white stripe in it. You can sell Matt Hardy's jacket. You know people are going to buy that. It's the whole nine yards. Matt Hardy is going to be like the number one selling guy in the Derby if when they do this broken thing. It's going to be so over and to do it with a guy like Bray Wyatt I think that's perfect. We know Bray Wyatt has to take a loss in this case and we, we know we complain about Bray Wyatt losing all the time but this makes sense for a Bray Wyatt loss. So guys, Matt Hardy coming to the WWE broken Matt. It looks like it's going to happen maybe as soon as tomorrow night on Raw. So if not, we're going to see a bigger, bigger tease tomorrow on Raw. And we saw that video. Maybe I don't know if they're going to incorporate Senor Benjamin to the, the gimmick. I think they should. They should include Rebby Hardy, Maximilian. Uh, it's hard because they have a newer baby too, so it's going to be hard to keep him on TV now, but maybe later down the line. Um but yeah, the Broken Matt comment we can see as soon as tomorrow. And it looks like they're heading towards Bray Wyatt, Matt Hardy for the Roar Rumble this year. And then maybe, it's just my opinion, maybe uh, they can do Matt Hardy versus Jeff Hardy at WrestleMania 34 uh, in New Orleans. So we'll see how it happens with that, guys. But I'm really stoked for the Broken Universe coming there to be. I know a lot of you guys out there are really, really stoked for it. But uh, that's going to do it for the news, guys. Uh, that's all I have for today. I know there's probably more out there, but uh, that's all I got and I want to report for you guys. So, guys, stay tuned for some more content coming to me. I told you I'm really close on our universe mode. Um, our slammers are happening in a couple of weeks, guys. We still haven't found a date yet, but it's going to be happening right after Clash of Champions, and we'll let, get that out to you guys um, for that. Um, and, I'm, and I'm also in talks with another podcast out there, a.k.a. Michael Chow podcast, and we some collab coming soon uh, with our podcast. So stay tuned for that. Um other than that, Lowdown Show, this coming Thursday, we're going to review uh, NXT, give our reactions. Guys, download the Spreaker app. I, I'm telling you right now, it's an awesome podcast app. Download it, make your profile, and you can chat with us while we're live on the air. We have the chat on our screens, and we'll interact with you guys and talk about what you're talking about in the chat. And make sure you tweet at us. Tweet us your thoughts and comments on NXT right after it's happening, and we'll read them right on the show for you guys. So, Other than that, guys, 
Uh, that is going to do it for Dirty Bee Headlines, your Dirty Bee news and rumor show every Sunday right here on YouTube, Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher, and on No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the Dirty Bee and NXT and No Holds Bar and anything we say. Pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Bar WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co-host at Corporate Cappy. You can also follow us on Instagram at No Holds Bar WP. If you want to listen to us on the go, we are available on Stitcher Radio, iTunes, and Spreaker. Again, download that Spreaker app for all Android and Apple devices, and you can listen to us and chat with us live whenever we are live on the air. And if you want to watch this video version of the podcast and all other stuff like that, 2K content, and everything else. YouTube.com slash NHBWR so we can find that. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, guys. I'll see you next time.